traffic behind him. That's Marco, four cars back. That's lap vehicles in between. Is that Herta in a second position I've seen right now? I don't think so. It's Brian Herta in the second position now. Yes, it is. It's a team car. He can help Michael win this race if he can just hold that line. It's Marco in the second place. He immediately gets out of the way. Marco's going by on the outside. Brian Herta's going to tuck right back in. Then it's Hornish. And the fourth car in that freight train is Sam Hornish. The, whole, the crowd is going nuts. They're jumping out. I've never seen the people this excited in my entire life. I wish the fans could look up and see what I'm seeing. Now, how dirty will Michael be to hold? back his son. Marco's going to take a look on the outside heading into one. We haven't seen that since 1991. Oh my gosh, Marco Andretti, 19 year old sensation. I've never seen a driver with this age as good as this kid is right now. He's amazing. He, the talent is on. Here comes Hornish on the inside. It's three to go. Look at Michael. He was trying to hold back Hornish so he would not have a chance of getting anywhere close to Marco. Looks like Michael's hopes for victory are dashed again. This time by, there will be two laps to go. The Indianapolis 500 has become the Indianapolis 5. Will it be Marco Andretti or will it be Sam Hornish Jr.? Hornish coming after him. The margin at the stripe, half a second. And the captain tells it all. Here comes Hornish. He's closing on Marco Andretti. Oh, this does not look good. Oh, Sam should have waited. He should have waited until the front stretch. It may cost him dearly because this time by, it will be one lap to go. Just listen to the crowd as they come down the front stretch. White flag. I believe Marco can do this. I really think he's got it. He's got to hold the line. Low lane, Marty Scott. This kid, I believe, is going to win this race. The most exciting Daytona 5. I'm sorry, the most exciting Indy 500 ever. Down the back stretch for the final time. His father has not won it in 15 tries. Through three. Hornish closing one more time. Coming out of four. Down the front stretch. It's a drag race. Marco Andretti. Hornish. Who's going to win at the stripe? It's Hornish. Oh, Hornish wins. Hornish wins. By six. One hundredth of a second. The closest finish. Second closest in Indy history. At the agony, the ecstasy, let's go back, take another look at this great finish. I didn't think Sam could do it after losing that first attempt, that I, first run. I absolutely thought that he blew it because he didn't get that run on him before and make it successful, but look at this. It almost made me myself back in 1992 when I chased Al Jr., except Sam got the job done. Scott, Roger Penske runs Sam Hornis that race. He won him that race by bringing him down pit road and topping him off the field and barely making it on field models. The second closest finish in the history of this 90-year event, Sam Hornish, who had never completed the 500 miles in his prior attempts here, in his seventh try, not only does he complete them, he wins the Indianapolis 500. I don't think I've ever been this excited in my entire life. I can't believe what I just witnessed. <laughs> it's incredible. That's what makes this the greatest spectacle in racing. I I'm happy Hornish won. I was pulling for that kid so bad. And I'm not supposed to say that. You know something? And we were at that Marlboro dinner the other night, and I sat beside his wife, Crystal, and she said he is so nervous for this event. He almost gets himself sick throughout the whole month of May. But here we go. Coming off of four, they were probably flat on it all the way around. He gets that draft off to Marco. Give Marco credit for not doing a huge block on him. And Sam goes through with the win. 37 years since an Andretti won at Indianapolis. This is the closest they have come. 
Does this place owe that family one? You be the judge. But Sam Hornish, who four times had finished 23rd or worse, gets his first Indianapolis 500 win. If you've never heard of Marco Andretti, the world knows him right now. Last year it was Danica Mania. This year, it's now Marco Mania. This kid's got nothing to hold his head down by. That's one of the most fantastic drives I've ever seen in my life. And Roger Penske, one of the smartest guys in the world. I can't believe he made this wonderful fuel mileage call for Hornish. There is the margin of victory as we take a look across the track. Six one hundredths of a second, the second closest in the history of the event. For Roger Penske, a record setting 14th Indianapolis 500 victory. He has now done it with 10 different drivers. Jamie? Mario Andretti, the first to greet his grandson. What are your emotions right now, Mario? Oh, I'm just so proud. I mean, uh, just so proud and relieved that it's all over. I think uh, this race lasted three days. Uh, just, uh, but it was so awesome to to watch these guys. Just, uh, they were up there with, in the thick of things right from the beginning, and so proud of them. Mario, what is it about the Andretti family? He's a third generation, almost won in his first attempt. What is it about you guys? We just love to drive. We love race cars. That's all it is. We're born to do that, I think. Congratulations. We're going to make our way on over to Marco Andretti. His mom, Sandy, here, all emotional. Marco Andretti, you told me Danica Patrick had some big shoes to fill after last year. You almost won this thing. What is going through your mind right now? Well, you just said I almost won this thing, you know? <laughs> um, man, I don't want to wait till next year. I wish it was today, but uh, I really, I think I could have been really bad at blocking, but that might have crashed us both, but, uh, you know, it happened. How did this day compare to what you have been building up in your mind your entire life? Uh, I knew I had a shot at it, I really did. I don't like to go into a race thinking I don't have a shot at it, but, uh, you know, and I thought I won it on the last lap. I really don't know where that speed came from, but uh, I guess they were, they were saving it. Take us through turn four when Sam Hornish was gaining on you. What was going through your mind at that time? I knew, this is what I, th I thought, if I just blocked him, you know, defended my line once, that I had it, but, uh, you know, the distance he was back, I think any other car would have won the race. I don't know where that came from, but, uh, you know, it's a bummer. I, I got to take advantage of every shot out here. I really do, because second's nothing. Jack Aroot, forget the rookie, a star has been born. And back when Sam Hornish Jr. was just four years old, he attended his first Indianapolis 500. He watched a Penske driver named Danny Sullivan spin and beat an Andretti. And now he has beaten that grandson to score his first Indy 500 victory, something that he said he would give up all of his championships, all of his pole positions, for an opportunity to be where he is today. Sam Hornish Jr. is an Indianapolis 500 champion. And Sam, before we do the interview, the most traditional drink of all. Oh, I love it. Nothing better right now. <laughs> Sam, you waited so long. Can you describe the emotions that you must be feeling at this point? It's been a long month, and uh, you know, not everything went our way as we saw today, but uh, we stuck together as a team. We had a good plan, and we were fast when we needed it. And uh, you know, I got to thank God I, I, for giving me a lot of talent and. Uh, and not so much the, the fact of what I can do driving, but the fact that I didn't want to give up and I wanted to keep coming back. And that he also put me with such a great team and gave me such a great parents and a, and a great wife that support me very much. Let's talk for a moment coming off of turn number four. You put it all on the line. You had the youngster 19 years old. You know what that's like. And you got it. When did you know you had it? I didn't. I thought that it was over when I didn't get by him going down in the three there, but uh, we dug down, put her back in gear, and took off. And, uh, you know, I got to say, you know, for his first time out there to go out and finish second, he had a heck of a ride. And, uh, you know, no matter what happens, he should be really proud with that. There's milk in your eyes, and there are tears in your eyes. I know you lost your grandmother just before qualifications. Your family has believed in you for so very long. You're an Indy 500 champion. How does it feel? 
it's a great feeling. I wouldn't uh, wouldn't trade it for anything else. I've had a lot of friends and uh, family pass away over the last couple of years, and I think they're all rooting me on today. So I was really happy with that. And, just got to thank this team, Marble Team Penske. They did a heck of a job and may not always go just the way you want it to, but it was much sweeter this way. I think there's someone here that wants to give you a big kiss. Your mom, your wife, Crystal, your dad who's, who believed in you and started you out in karting. Pop, what do you say to your son that's now an Indy 500 champion? Congratulations. Well, it's a Buckeye day of celebration here at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Born and raised in Defiance, Ohio, he is now the 2006 Indianapolis 500 champion and now an Indy 500 immortal. Let's go back to the tower. Over 700 have tried to win. Only 65 have their face on the Borg Warner Trophy. Sam Hornish is now one of that elite crowd. We'll talk to Michael Andretti when we come back.